Hi, I'm Gary Kelly, Managing Director of GK Media, and you're very welcome to The Loft Studios here in Galway City Centre. I'm delighted to be joined by Jermit Keeney of ICANN Acoustics, which is a nationwide Irish company which deals with environmental noise and building acoustics. So, Jermit, thanks for joining us today. No problem, Gary. If you can just briefly outline the sort of actual work that ICANN Acoustics does. Okay, so as you quite rightly pointed out, we do everything from environmental noise to building acoustics, and that could... Just to give you a couple of examples of building acoustics, that would be issues like echo, for example, in large sports halls. You could have sound insulation issues between two apartments in terms of meeting the building regulations. Um, the uh, other the other f um, similar types of work would be issues like inbound noise, for example, if you were living beside a, a railway line, for example, um, you might have an issue where you have sound breaking into a residential property, that type of thing. Cool, and there are regulations in place, so like if you're building apartments and houses and stuff, there is certain regulations there, in place there for sound. There, there is, yeah. In 2014, they amended the Irish building regulations to make sound insulation testing compulsory, which is great. Um, from, from our perspective, it means, and obviously from the buyer's perspective, it means that all the houses built nowadays um, have to be sound insulation tested, which is a good, a good thing. Perfect. Well, we brought you in here today, Jeremy, to do a sound test for us because we're based in Galway City Centre, which is great, mm -hmm. but we're in a protected, structured building. Yes. So we can't do anything with the outside of the building. We can do a, a certain amount, limited yeah. amount within the building. Okay. And during the year, we renovated our space here to put in an area where people could do podcast recordings, among other things, such as green yeah. screen, uh, mm. pieces to camera and stuff like that. Mm. Generally, what we do in here is we push this table right up against the wall. Okay. And as you can see, I have a panel here of acoustic foam. The idea of that yeah. is to stop uh, reflection as such and absorb the sound yeah. uh, to a degree. Because you would have people kind of sitting here, the microphones point yeah. up that way, and even the foam that we use, it wouldn't be the flimsy stuff you traditionally get when you buy sure. a microphone. It's a much thicker mm. uh, pop sock. Okay. that we use but yeah. i suppose you know with the mics pointing up there is to yeah. stop it hitting the plaster yeah and yeah. then we'd have the these panels here almost creating a wall yeah. around the person as well so yeah. could you just maybe outline the yeah. pros and cons if any of doing something like yeah, that yeah well as, as i say if you have a microphone here for example you, you want to record obviously a person's speech the last thing you want is a reflection off a surface behind and um, so you, you want to you know absor uh, measure a clean a clean signal is, is really what you're measuring and um, so it, it is good practice to include some sort of absorption behind um, an individual to avoid those reflections and, and that's good good in terms of principle perfect and principles behind kind it. of really thick foam walls here as well yeah yeah well they're 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 a, certainly a, an excellent absorber and again like that they're set out from the wall which is which is good in terms of low frequency absorption you can get some pretty good effects if you've if you've a lot of um a longer reverberation times and some of the lower frequencies by setting them out from the wall you get a good good you know good absorption at those uh, frequencies in terms of the structure of yeah uh, the loft studios that we have yeah. here yeah. it's not an actual square yeah. you know the, the walls are sort of slanted is that yeah. a good thing for it, it is a good thing in fact um, a lot of the bbc studios in the uk what they'll do is they'll offset a wall and you want to create sort of non-parallel walls because you do get standing waves happening between um, I, d I don't know if you ever hear the effect of flutter echo. If you're between two parallel walls and you clap your hands and you hear this sort of uh, flutter that comes after it, that, that's, that's, um, that's an effect you don't want in your recordings. So actually by the very fact that the, the roof structure is vaulted, um, you end up with a situation where you have a lot of non-parallel walls. And that's a good thing. Um, because you want the sound bouncing all over the place. You, you do, you do it, it, it does two things. It stops a reflection directly back at you, which yeah. is good. Uh, and the second thing is obviously yes. You, you, the, by the very fact that they're not parallel means that they they're less likely. If you think of two parallel walls and sound passing over and back, whereas you go and you angle them down like you, like as has happened here, yeah. um, you end up with that b decaying. You know, it's you're changing the path if you like or interrupting it. So like a worst case scenario, or worst case design is a cube. Okay. You, you do not want to cube. Yeah, very bad acoustic. Yeah. Okay, so let's carry out the sound test. You can explain uh, yeah. to us exactly what we're doing and of course we're looking for a reasonably dead sound but not too dead because it, it's not natural then exactly you, you um the, the idea i suppose behind a, a reverberation test is you want to measure how long it takes for that sound to, to die away um and using an analyzer like this you can quantify that in all of the octave bands and see how it performs 
in each one. So I can I can I can right, do yeah. I do a measurement there and um, I just start that running now. I'll just arm it. Um, now I use um, for example, I'm using we say two books here, which worked perfectly fine. So what we're doing here is creating energy in the space. So we're creating a loud bang. You can also do this with by popping a balloon, for example, is another way of doing it. So as soon as the instrument detects that there has been a loud bang, what it does is it starts to measure how long it takes for that bang to fall away. So just as a quick example, if you think of a, um, a large sports hall, if I was in a large sports hall now and you created a loud bang, it would take a long time for it to die away, whereas um, in an absorptive room, it would die away a lot quicker. So I'll just do that very quickly. Okay, one second now. So just to explain, um, what, what I've done there is if, if you look at the um, each of the octave bands, these are 125 hertz, 250, 500 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz and so on. I've measured the reverberation time in each of those bands. So you can see, Gary, there that the, um, the reverberation time at uh, 250 hertz is 0.33 of a second. You can see at 500 hertz is 0.33. At 1 kilohertz is 0.33. Uh, it's slightly higher there, 2 kilohertz is 0.38, but you'll notice generally it's quite flat, and that's a good thing. Okay. You, you don't want a room that's going to um, have you know higher reverberation times at certain frequencies. You want it to create sort of a flat room, uh, and so that's a best, that's a good, it's a good result in that respect. And for a broadcast yeah. studio, it should anyways be between 0.2 and 0.4, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should be in a, in around there. That's where you want to aim it to be. Yeah, yeah. Right. And again, just think about the application. But but for this type of application, that's a that's an ideal uh, result. Okay, well, Jeremy, thanks many for coming in and no doing problem. an acoustic test for us. If you are planning an outdoor concert yourself, or if you have any sound issues in the workplace, make sure you get in touch with Jeremy at I Can Acoustics.